Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop whoop. Happy Wednesday to you. So what are we doing today? We're still working on that crazy quilt. We have two more uh, stitches. We got two more stitches to do that I wanted to share with y'all. I think that's a great beginning for uh, you to experiment with and to play with and to find out how much you really like it. And then you can go to like the experts, right? <laughs> so two more stitches. This week is the feather stitch. You know, we all love in quilting that feather when somebody quilts a feather in the quilting. Well, in the world of embroidery, it's actually a very popular and versatile foundation stitch too. So we are going to do this feather stitch and I've got mine already done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. We don't have to chit chat anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. So I'll see you in just a sec. So here we are at my practice cloth. It, it's leftovers from a cross stitch project like I've talked about before. And you've seen all these right? This is the feather stitch. And these are the upcoming uh, st types of feather stitches that we're going to be talking about. But I need to show you how to do a basic feather stitch. Okay. So again, I have pulled up my thread. I have a knot back there. I just did a quilter's knot and I pulled it up. Now, when you pull up your thread from your cloth, whether it's on your block, whether it's on a practice, whatever it is, um, it's the top of the feather stitch we're going to be working down okay so i pulled it up where i'm going to start and what we're going to do is i'm using the numbers six and four okay so i'm going to go across or no i'm going to do seven one two three four five six seven holes and this is just for practice let me tell you it doesn't work the same when you have a piece of fabric that doesn't have um holes you're basically going to want to keep it even, okay, going across. That's the goal. You want to keep it even. Well, then <clears throat> you want to go to the middle. So I'm going to go three across, and then I'm going to go four down. So the middle is is right here, okay, between these, these two. So we've come up through here. We're going down into across evenly. And then just somewhere in the middle, if you're working on your block, you just want to be somewhere in between. Okay. And the important thing is, so your needle should be pointing downward, right? And you want the working thread to be under the needle. And then you're just going to simply pull through. And you're going to give yourself what looks like a little V. Okay. And this, this working thread forms a a, a little bit of a loop but it goes over the V then we're going to go across seven again but it would be even on your own block you just want to be in a straight line from the point that you came out of and again we're just going to go down so we're going to go about the middle wherever the middle between the two stitches is and you know you want to try and keep some consistency okay so I'm going to come out right there and again my needle is pointing this direction and I'm going to put it right underneath okay and then this working threads underneath the needle I'll just pull through so now we have another V but it's a little cattywankus it's a little bit over to the right then we're going to go back the other direction. Now we'll see. Usually I turn my fabric. I turn my blocks when I did it on my block too. But we're going to go over on the same line. Equal. And this is where I'm going to go down. Now I've counted seven across again. And I'm going to pick the middle. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. I promise you guys I will show it the correct direction. This just makes it so much easier. Now, I didn't have to do this as much on my block. It was actually much easier to do on the block than it was on this practice. 
So I've gone over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. yep. So I'm gonna come back in the middle and then down. Okay, pick a spot where I'm gonna come out. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this around again. Now you'll notice that now my needle is paint pointing this direction, okay? Very important. And again, your working thread needs to go under the needle, okay? And then you're gonna simply pull through. So you can see how we're building this beautiful, beautiful block. So I'll go across on the on equal from the stitch that just came out. And I'm gonna come to the middle between the two stitches and down. Okay. And again, the working thread needs to be under the needle. And we're gonna pull through. Okay, we're gonna go across again. I'm just gonna do one more with you. Okay, that's where I'm gonna come in. All right, now I'm gonna flip it around because it, I'm telling you guys, it's so much easier on your practice cloth to do this. But again, I didn't have to do that on my block. It was actually a very easy, this seems tricky but it actually is pretty darn easy. So I'm gonna go over into the middle between where my needle's going in and the stitch that came out, I'm going into the middle. And I'm gonna come out down. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it around again so you can tell where we're at, because you may not have to flip it. All right. So this is what we have, okay? I'm gonna put my working thread, oh, let me get back underneath here. This is what we got, now look, I'm, I'm angled this direction on this side. On the right side, I'm angled that direction. Very important to note. So then I take my working thread, I put it under the needle, and pull through. And that, my friends, is a feather stitch. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how I did the feather stitch with these cute beads, okay? So we're gonna come back at you in just a sec, so I'll see you in just a bit. Just like all of the other beading, the amount of beads that you're gonna be able to place will be determined by the length of your stitch, okay? Uh, you can lay out beads and see how long you're gonna to need to make it, that way you know, or, um, you can say, I want two beads, I want three beads, and make sure you have the right length for them, okay? But I think, I'm not gonna lay it out, but I think I can get two on here. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Okay, and I also realized that I forgot to show you how to end your stitch, so we'll go over that in just a second at the end of this one. So we're gonna add beads. So again, you're gonna pull up your thread at the top of your feather stitch, wherever the top is, okay? Because it's the same thing, we're just adding beads. And at this point, you go ahead and load or thread your beads onto your stitch. Then what you do is you go over seven, just like, be well, I, I'm using seven, okay, seven and four. I'm still gonna use the same number. So I'm gonna go over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna go in three, one, two, three, but down four, one, two, I'm counting guys, one, two, three, four. I think this is four, okay? Again, you're gonna want to keep your beads up on top. Make sure that your thread though is going under the needle and then simply pull through. And then you'll have your beads and you just wanna make sure, you know, you can straighten them out, do what you need to do, okay? All right, so now, Remember, we're gonna go over three, right? So again, I'm gonna go ahead and load, or not over three, over seven. 
I'm going to go ahead and load a couple of beads. Okay, so they're on here. Again, I'm going to go over seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then I want to go in into the middle, wherever the middle is. This is three for me. One, two, three, and down four, because that's the number I picked. Okay. Oop, might help if I did this correctly. One, two, three, one, two, three. I think this is four. Okay. So then we come out. Now I'm going to situate these beads because I've made kind of a mess about them. Okay. I want my thread to be under and my beads to be on this side. And then again, we're just going to simply pull through. Okay. Super cute. Love it. Okay. Now we're going to go back. Okay. Which will be one, one, two, three, four, five. Let me go ahead and load some beads first. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and load the beads. That one doesn't have a hole. Give me a hot minute here. <laughs> you got to find some with holes in it. Okay. So there's one. I think we can get two. Remember, well, I think it's looking pretty good with two. If I wanted three, I just make that stitch deeper. Okay. So we're going to go over, over seven again. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I'm going to turn my cloth because we're working in the opposite direction and that's easier for me to just basically do it upside down. Okay, now I'm going to go in three, one, two, three. Whoops, get back in that hole. Hopefully that was seven. One, two, three, four, five, I think so. So we're going to go over three and down four. One, two, three, four, I think. One, two, three. I think so. Okay, now let's put it back just so I don't get y'all confused. That was just for me to count. Okay, we're going to make sure that I'm under, the thread is under the needle. Okay, and then we're going to simply pull through. Oh, and look, see one of my little, one of my little guys, he's causing trouble. When I lifted it up, he came out. So we're going to come back and push him in the other direction if he'll let me. So if that happens to you, you just make them go where they need to go. Okay. And I'll do one more with you. Got a couple more beads. I'm going to go ahead and load them on. Oh, I don't know if this one has a hole. We're going to find out. Yep, it does. Okay. Put two more beads on. Now, if you noticed, I, I just kind of left them on there, but you can pull them through if you so desire. All right. We're going to go over again. Seven for me. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to go in with my needle and I'm going to come out in the middle and down. So the middle for me is three. One, two, three. I think this is four. Okay. Now you want to make sure once again that your thread is under the needle. Okay. And then we're simply going to pull it through. I've got a heck of a tail. There we go. And you'll just keep doing this alternating back and forth and back and forth. Okay. Super cute, right? Yeah. Now to end it, to keep your points all 
centered and where they're supposed to be, you're going to simply go, I would be going over seven to put the needle in, right? So I'm only going to go over three. I'm going to go that halfway mark. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go down the four. One, two, three, four. And just simply put the needle in, okay? And pull the, pull the thread through. Now, of course, we've got a hot mess back here because my tail's super long. There we go. And then you then you can knot it off in the back and you can have that finished. Is that not super cute? Super cute. Now, one more stitch with the feather stitch and then we will be done with this one. But I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, as you can see, I've got a, I've already been working. Well, I was out of the camera view. I'm going to do my absolute best to make it better that I'm in this camera view for you because this stitch is a little bit tricky. So it's important that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It is called the up and down feather, feather stitch. It is so much fun, but it is a little tricky. So it's not too bad though, not too bad at all. You're gonna come out just like we did before, okay? You have a knot in the back, you pull it through at the top of the stitch. So we're gonna still be working down. We're gonna go across seven, okay? I'm gonna come over three, because that's my middle, and down four. One, two, okay. It's kind of nice because I, I can see the holes. <laughs> and just like before, you want your working thread underneath, okay? And we're simply going to pull that through to give us that V, okay? Where this is looped over top, okay? Now what we're going to do is a second stitch. And this one is a lot of fun. You're going to go back in right below where you came out, okay? And this time we're going to go up. Our needle is going to face up and out and we're going to go like two below the stitch above us. Now this is your choice. You can make it wider. You can make it skinnier. You can make it longer. I'm just showing you how it's done. And then when you practice, you play around with it and oh, some of the stuff that we can come up with. Again, you're going to want to put that working thread underneath your needle. Okay. Now when you pull through, you want to make sure that this loop, you want to pull this loop over, okay? And you're going to want to pull the working thread down and towards you and out, okay? And as you can see, well, it's hard to see because it's a dark thread, but there's a little bar right here, okay? And it gives you that second stitch, okay? Now from here, we're going to go back to normal. So I'm going to go out seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where I'm going to go down. Now I have to turn my fabric around. If you have to, great. It's okay. Whatever this does to make sure that you are getting it done and it's easy breezy, right? So we would go in three, one, two, three, and then down one, two, that's not three, down four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I can see it. All right, now I'm going to turn it back around so we're not confusing. All right. Again, the working thread is under the needle before you pull it through, okay? So then we'll just go ahead and pull through. Boom. Now we're going to go one below it, just right back in. We're going to go up and out this time. The needle is going up and out that direction, opposite from what it was going. I'm going to go two below the stitch above it. I'm going to make sure my working thread is under the needle, okay? And then we're going to pull through. And when we do, you want to make sure that loop, see this loop that's forming. I'm going to put my thumb right where I want it to go as soon as it gets a little closer. And I'm going to pull this thread down and out. Here, I'll just do this. I think this might be easier. And again, 
it gives us a second stitch. It, they're, they're really close. You can make these so much further apart. That would be okay. It's completely up to you. I'll do another one. And then I'm going to show you something really cool. And I'll make this stitch a little bit deeper. So we would go, this is just a normal one now. So over seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where we're going to go in. We're going to come out at in between the two, one, two, and three. I'm going down the middle, and hopefully that's four. It might not be because I don't want to waste too much of your time. So I want to make sure this working thread is underneath. Okay, we're going to pull it through to get that V, and then we're going to do a second stitch. And our needle is going to go that direction. It's opposite from when you put it in the first one. So I'm going to go right underneath it. And this time I'll go three deep. Yep. Okay, again, you wanna make sure that working thread is underneath. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull it through and I'm holding on to that loop. When it gets a little closer, I'm gonna hold it down. Okay. And I'm gonna pull down and out. And then it's snug. And then you can see how we've got two stitches there. Super cute, love it. Now you could make these wider. You can even make the small ones wider, but I'm gonna show you something else. Remember I always go down the middle? You don't necessarily have to do that. So let's go, um, trying to think how to do this. <laughs> Give me just a hot second here. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna go seven across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where I'm going to want to come down. Oh, I'm going to go out further for you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to go nine deep. Okay. And this time I'm going to come down one stitch over, but still I'll go five deep. Okay. So I'm going to flip this upside down because it's easier for me to manipulate. So I went nine across. This time I'm going to go down one over from that knot from that stitch so it'd be like right here i'm going to start counting okay i'm right next to it right i know it's hard to see here let me see if i if i um focus hold on okay so i'm one next to it but i don't want to come out there i'm going to go five deep one two three four five deep so this one's a little longer oh heck we'll do six let's do six deep Okay, and again, here, let me flip this, sorry, let me flip this around. Okay, get it in the camera view. This is what we have. We went nine across, six deep. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my working thread is under. Now notice, instead of being in the middle coming out, I'm right in that same line. Okay, isn't that pretty, guys? I mean, that would just make a beautiful stitch, would it not? Okay. So we're going to come down, we're going to pull this through, and if you'll notice, our stem now, instead of going cattywonkus, right, it's going straight down. Now we're going to add a second stitch. So I am going to go ahead and go one down below, and then I'm just going to pick somewhere. I'm not even going to count. I'm going to go mm, maybe a little bit out. Like I said, it's completely up to you how you want to do this, but you want to go ahead and put the thread under the needle okay we're going to pull it through now that knot is or that loop is beginning to form so i'm going to hold this down with my thumb and i'm pulling this i'm pulling this thread down and out down and out okay there we go so you can see how these are a little bit longer and they kind of look nice too right and then you've got this more straight of a of a uh, straight down um, type of um, stitch here going on. Now I'm just trying to straighten it up a little bit by making it just a little tighter. And all I'm doing is tugging on the different threads. Okay, so then let's do the same thing. So from this bottom point, I'm going to go out nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's where I'm going to come in at. 
put my needle in there and I'm going to get this right away so it's not in my way, not in your way. I'm going to go down six, one over from the knot I just made. So one, two, three, four, five, and there is six. If I can get my needle to come out. Okay, so that's what we have. We want to make sure. Now look, we're going down and out for that first stitch. You make sure that it is under the needle, the working thread is, you pull it through, okay? And we still have sort of a V, but the line is really straight, right? All right, now we're gonna do our second stitch. Let me make my cloth here a little bit more easy for me to manage. <clears throat> I'm gonna go one under. So right below, if you're not working with holes in your in your fabrics, you go right below that stitch that you just put in. Now notice the needle is going up and out this time instead of down and out. I'm going to come down, you know, about, well, I said it wasn't even going to count, so we're not going to count. They won't look equal necessarily. Okay, right there. All right, so then we get that working thread away from the needle here so we know what we got going on. All right, we're going to put the working thread under the needle boom just like so okay we're going to pull it through all right we're going to make sure that we hold that loop see how it's forming hold that loop you're going to pull it's easier if i pull with my other hand for you guys down and out okay down and out there we go look at that see in that gorgeous guys and you could, you could make it more straight like, well, this one I pulled really tight, that one not so much. And you'll get better just like I will. It's a learning experience. This is super cute. This is super defining. And there's a lot of things that you can do with this type of stitch. Now, I wanna mention real quick that you don't have to do this along a seam. The thing that's really cool about the feather stitch, you could do it along a seam or you could do it up into a block or somewhere in the middle or towards the end but you do not have to just do it on a seam, okay? This is a very, very cool foundation um, stitch. It's one of the most popular, and now you know how to do it too. So how am I gonna end this? Well, I'm gonna go down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go on the other side, one. All right, and I'm just gonna pull it through. And then I could stitch, I could, um, what could I do? I could, oh, I should have gone over one more. So I went over one too many, but that's okay. It won't matter, guys. It truly won't. But now you can knot it and finish off your stitch. Okay? So that is, this is your feather stitch. Okay? This is your feather stitch with beads. And here we have a feather stitch that is the up and down feather stitch. Super cute. You got to love it. Now you know how to do it. Cannot wait to see your feather stitches. I'll see you guys with my block in just a bit. So here is my block, right? This is the one I've been working on with different stitches with you guys. And this is what I've done with my feather stitch. So this one is just the regular um, feather stitch. But what I did is I made this line go along the seam in the center. Now, another thing, I kind of like this smaller size. I don't know how you feel, but I like this smaller size. I experimented, because <laughs> I can, because um, it's just a crazy quilt. But I went ahead and tried to look to see what it would look like when it was a little bigger, and I prefer this. So when I go to do another one, I'm gonna be very cognitive of the various different sizes and I'll use this as a reference okay the other one that I did and I got my needle in there still all right so this one there we go let me pull this over it's a lot of white going on well a little bit move back here we go this is the up and down and I still did it along the seam. You don't have to do that again. You could do it inside your block. You can make it meander a little bit or wave, I guess, would be a better word. Um, you could go through various different places. 
but because I had two seams left, I wanted to utilize that. And this up and down, I actually did it catawankus on the back and forth instead of the straight line. And I like it too. It's a lot of fun. So now I am not yet embellishing with buttons and all kinds of stuff yet. I've got one more stitch um, that I want to share with you and I'll do that next month. And then I'll put it on this block and then we will, I will, not we, <laughs> I will embellish it. And I will definitely show you um, this block completely embellished with some goodies in it. I don't know how many goodies I'm going to put because there's a lot of stitches and a lot of beads and things, but we will see, right? We will see. So let me come right back at you. I'll see you in just a sec. So that is the feather stitch. I hope you're enjoying this. I know I've gotten a couple of messages. And of course, Mary, our, one of our cherubs here in Halo, has completed her crazy quilt. And it's absolutely gorgeous. You can check that out in October's Cherub Chit Chat because we shared it. It is absolutely very inspiring. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check that one out. But I'm glad for those of you who are coming along. I can't wait to see yours either. And I'm sure the rest of us here in Halo would love to see it. Uh, give us that great information and uh, inspiration. Not information, inspiration. Yes, absolutely. So that's what I got. I will be on live today at 3 p.m. Eastern time because I'm here in Virginia for our live Q&A. And I'll talk about a couple of things and we will definitely go from there right okay so next week what are we doing next week next week is a christmas wednesday can't wait to bring another project to you hope you enjoyed as much as i have and until next time guys or until 3 p.m may you all continue to be inspired productive ever so joyful never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true I love y'all. Happy quilting. Whoop, whoop. See y'all soon.